The first time I saw it was the morning after the fires. It was apocalyptic. I can only liken it to a volcanic eruption. It wasn't steam, but it was smoke and cloud and the smell, it's really a stench of fire and destruction. You had that little glimmer that maybe part of it uh, was left. And then the next morning I saw on the, the Channel 7 News, the helicopter footage, and that's when it just hit me. The devastation and the, just the reality that it's apocalyptic and our lodge that we put our hearts and souls into just wasn't there. Walking along the ocean up through the coastal landscape that was once very dense and rich with life and colour, that's the first way we ever came to the lodge and we walked up there again and it was really fascinating because when you're on that edge of the coast the ocean is so alive, the ferocity of the waves, so much life and colour and then there's still some low-lying grasses that are growing on the edge and so it makes the reality of what you're seeing here not as harsh to to sort of comprehend all in one go and it was a really nice balance to think that's nature and this is what how nature will be once again. I think now's our chance. I mean, the amazing opportunity comes from a terrible loss, but hey, let's move forward. I think the sadness and the, and the loss feeling is, is passing and now it's all about Let's get on and do this. Because a lot of people would say, why are you going to go ahead and build a lodge right in the middle of a, of a dense bushland area? It burnt down once, it'll burn down again. But I think that's the story that we've really got here is because we're not going to give up just like that. We're going to look at everything, all the situations that we could have potentially done differently. We're going to take all the advice we can and we will be able to take those learnings and rise from the ashes. We owe this to ourselves, but we owe this to, to the island.